mean everything to me because I know you mean everything to Christ. And Christ means everything to me. And I called on the Lord. I said, yeah. the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise him up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. And they doing it. Again, man, America, they got black people out here feeling sorry and showing sorrow. You understand? For their loved ones and their loss that happened on 9 11. But meanwhile, we are told to forget what's happened to us. Meanwhile, we are told to forget slavery. It's in the past. We've all been in slavery. What about the Jewish man? What about the white man? What about the Irish? What about them? You understand? But what about blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians? Are we allowed to feel for our own? Are we allowed to feel for the murder and the lives that's taken from us? Are we allowed to feel for the neighborhoods that's been gentrified? Are we allowed to feel the fact that we don't have our fathers in the house? Are we allowed to feel the pain and the suffering that you've caused to blacks and Hispanics? Are we allowed to feel that? But of course, America, you're a treacherous nation. Of course, America, you're an evil nation. And the rest of you races as well. The rest of you nations as well. You look down on black people when we try to talk about slavery. Well, you would never question a Jewish man if he was up here talking about the Holocaust. You would show all absolute respect. You would show, uh, you would show respect and let them born in peace. But blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, you told us to go pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. You showed us no sympathy. You showed us that, that our black men that went and fought in your wars, no sympathy. You showed the sisters that sent your white behind up to the moon, no sympathy. Thank you, brother. You understand? Grab your flyer. You understand? You showed us, you showed us no sympathy. You understand, sorry? I'm out of politics. You understand? You understand? Wait. Here you go. You understand? You belong to the 12 tribes of Israel, man. You understand? You told us that we had to forget about ours. You told us to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. You never showed any sympathy towards the sisters that sent your white behind up to the moon. You understand? You never showed any sympathy to the blacks and Hispanics. The Hispanics that get in that field and pick your apples and strawberries and pick your oranges in that sun for 24 hours a day, you never showed no sympathy for them. When we get lost in your detention centers, you tell us to get over it. You tell our babies to get over it when their parents go missing. You understand? You look at us as a cancer on society and a stain on society. You show us no sympathy. Meanwhile, your, your flags is raised half staff and everybody has to have a moment of silence across America for 9-11, where there was no moment of silence for the terror that, for them, that was suffered by blacks and Hispanics. Right. There was none, man. You understand? You don't hold yourself guilty, and that's found in the Bible. Read Zechariah 11 and 5. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. Whose possessors slay them? Whose possessors do what? Slay them. Say again. Whose possessors slay them? The Bible says, whose possessors slay them? You understand? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians? The white man has slayed us. Our oppressor, the colonizer on this earth, has enslaved them. Our possessors, the one who has their foot on our necks right now, the one that can send our black behinds to prison, the ones that can lock us up for life, the one that created a three strike rule that you're behind voting for today. Whose possessors slay them? Keep reading. Oh, and hold himself, not guilty. What do our oppressors do? Hold himself. Not guilty. What does the white man do? Hold himself. Not guilty. You understand? The Bible says our oppressors who possess us hold themselves not guilty. They slay and murder us, and they don't think they've done anything wrong. They put out our men in chains. They throw us in the prison houses and don't think they did nothing wrong. They locked us up for drugs when they put drugs in our neighborhoods, but they don't think they did nothing wrong. They drop guns in our alleys in our neighborhoods, and they don't think they did nothing wrong. Our oppressor, they call themselves white because they think they're pure. But the Lord Bible, means that God in this Bible understands what you really are. And you're the devil on this earth, man. You've been lying to blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. You tortured us with your lies. You tortured us with your hatred, man. And it's spoken of in the Bible. If this is not talking about the white man, you tell me who it's talking about. Who 
kill black people and then go on administrative leave? Huh? Who do that? Who does that? Who has a badge on that takes the lives of blacks and Hispanics and then walks around like they didn't do? Huh? What's the devil in Texas that stole both of John's life? Amber Geiger. Amber Geiger's her name, right? Went into an apartment that she thought was hers. Saw the brother there in his drones, eating ice cream, and shot him. And told the news reporter that she thought it was her apartment complex. That was her second body she dropped. But they don't talk about that. But black man, when you commit a crime, you understand when you when you or you're, you're the victim, they say, oh, you, he was a criminal. They say, well, he was a thug. You dead, and they bring it out that you was a thug. Didn't they do that to George Floyd? Huh? When George Floyd got pressed out with a knee on his neck, they brought out that he was a criminal. They brought out that he was a criminal. But you see, they hold themselves not guilty for what they do. Right. But yet they fooled black people. We got weak behind leaders that then caused us to show a little sympathy <laughs> for what happens to everybody else. Meanwhile, we're not taught to remember what happens to us. Right. Meanwhile, in this hell hole, we're not taught to remember what happens to us. But we got to remember what happens to everybody else, man. The Bible says this, read it from the top. Who's possessed to slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Who's possessed to slay them and hold themselves not guilty, man. America, you never held yourself guilty for 400 years of slavery. You walk around here today, the children of slave masters, you walk around here today believing like you have not benefited from what your forefathers did. Where if it wasn't for George Washington enslaving black people, if it wasn't for Thomas Jefferson having over 400, uh, uh, 400 slaves, if it wasn't for your forefathers on Mount Rushmore who did what they did to blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians, what would you have today? If it wasn't for the bloodshed that they caused, the blood that they spilled, your blood, the blood of the 12 tribes of Israel that's on this sun. If it wasn't for them, man, what would you have? You got the you got to steal. You got to take people's lives. You got to spoil the earth. You got to spoil your black people. You got to harm God's chosen people. Because in your mind, you believe that you're the chosen. In your mind, you believe that you're the best. When nothing you do is the best. Right. Only thing you know how to do the best is But let me help you understand that even you are not the best of that. The God of this Bible is so much better than you. Right. The God of this Bible can unalive so much more than you. And he's going to show you when he says about Christ and 200 million angels. You understand? You ain't even the best at that. You understand? Give me Jeremiah 50 and 7. We're going to break it all the way down. You sit here and you harm us and you say, where's your God at? You harm us and stand over our necks. You cast your shadow over us, fooling black people into believing that you're better than us. You let that suit jacket make you believe that you're better than the slaves. Well, what would you have without the slaves? What would you have without the slaves building your stick behind kingdom? What inventions would you have if it wasn't for the slaves? Your t-shirts that you have on today say 100% made in cotton. Cotton to pick my who? Cotton to pick my So what would you have today? You wouldn't have your shirt on your goddamn backs if it wasn't for the slaves. But yet, we can't remember how we had to pick cotton. Yet the Hispanics can't remember how you had to pick cotton. You got all of your healthy regime, regimes, resumes, you got all of your fruit baskets, fruit smoothies. You understand your tropical smoothie? What Hispanic gets the benefit of tropical smoothie? Of Smoothie King? When they the ones that's picking all your fruits, huh? What benefit do they get? What credit do they get? They get none. But meanwhile, the rest of these businesses in America, you thrive. The ones behind all of the hard labor has been the slaves this entire time. And you fooled the world that this was the place that everybody should come to. And the rest of the world got on the bandwagon with you. They came over here and did the same damn thing that you do to us today. They came over here and oppressed black people. They came over here and took black people's neighborhoods. They came over here and spoiled black businesses and spoiled black our neighborhoods. That's exactly what they did. Right. Just like the oppressor, man. You got what I want? Read. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. All that found them have devoured them. The Ethiopians have found us and devoured us. The East Indians, they came to America, found us and devoured us. You Africans come to America, you found the n you found the slaves and you devoured us. You white man, you oppressors, you found the slaves and you devoured us. And you know what happened after you devoured us? Read. Oh God. And their adversary said, 
We offend not. What did the adversary say? We offend not. What did the white man say? We offend not. What did the African say? We offend not. What did the East Indian say? We offend not. What did the Ethiopian say? We offend not. Our adversary said we offend not. After you devoured us, right. after you spoiled the slaves, you said we offend not. It's just slavery. Everybody wants to slavery. That's what you oppressors say. That's what you say. You Chinese, you Japanese, you Asians, you little Jewish, our long nosed right, uh, right bastards. Right. All the other came over here, devoured us, and the adversary said, What? We offend not. That's what our enemy said. Our enemy said, Man, look, man, everybody dies. We was in slavery too. How, how many black people can raise their hand every single time they get to talk about slavery? Some white person want to talk about, well, we were enslaved too, man. We were enslaved too, buddy. The East Indian get to shaking his head, talk about he was in slavery. You can't never get any time to remember what's happened to you. And our adversaries say, we offend not. We ain't got nothing to do with it, man. Yeah, we devoured you up, Mafia. Yeah, we took your neighborhood. Yeah, 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 all of that chocolate city, this chocolate city, that. You understand? You say 14th Street, we say Ethiopian Street. Right? You got all of your languages on the towers that we built. We don't know what the hell is saying. I know you devoured us. I know you I know you devoured us. You got your neighbor, you got your restaurant. You done devoured us. You got us buying your chicken from you when we should be buying it from another black or Hispanic who cooks way better than you. So I know you devoured us. But even after, you said we offend not. What are you offended for? What are you offended for, slave? What are you offended for, black man? What are you offended for, Hispanic man? What are you offended for, Native Indian? The Bible says what? After they have found us and they devoured us, our adversary said what? We offend not. When you want us to remember 9-11, but we got to forget about slavery. What do you say after that? We offend not. You tell us everybody's been in slavery. You say the Ethiopians been in slavery. The Chinese been in slavery. The Jewish man, what about the Jewish Holocaust? What about the nigger Holocaust? What about when you cattled up black people like cattle and threw us on ships? Huh? What about that Holocaust? What about when you had us defecate on them ships? Our sisters on their cycle. And you told them to stay still. It's going to be a puppy ride. That's what you told us. That's what you told us. That's what happened. But you say we offend not. You oppressors is evil. Right. You Asians is evil. You Caucasians is evil. You Africans is evil. You East Indians is evil. You Ethiopians is evil. You other nations have been evil towards blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Right. And according to the Bible, you devoured us. Right. And then you try to say that we offend not. You don't hold yourself guilty either. You don't see how you oppress black people. You ask, you tell a, 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 a heathen today, how they, they'll say, how do we oppress black people? I love black people, man. I got black friends. Right. I, I, all of a sudden, your best friend is black. That's the first one you want to speak on. They, they don't know what you're talking about because it's embedded into their system. It's far past them. It's far past them. It's far past the YouTubers. It's far past them. It's been going on. You don't even know how you oppress us. That's why you ask. Well, everybody's oppressed, not they up. Everybody's oppressed. Everybody's starving. Don't nobody starve like a black and Hispanic. You understand? Don't nobody mourn like a black and Hispanic. Don't nobody work harder than a black and Hispanic. Don't nobody get crushed and ran over and used and abused more than blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. And after you use and abuse us and devour us, you destroy us, you take our lives, you have no sympathy. We offend not, man. You oppressors is evil, man. You oppressors, God is going to deal with you, man. You tell us to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. When Christ comes back, there will be no bootstraps for you that was the, uh, to uh, pull yourself up by. Right. There will be no bootstraps for you oppressors to pull yourself up by, man, in that day. Because you fooled us to believing that we had a fair shot. And then when we got up, you got jealous. You got envious of our marriages. You saw that we was beating the statistics. You saw that we was beating the odds. And you burned down black cities. You flooded black cities. You turned them into lakes and tourist attractions. That's what you did. You turned D.C., which was Chocolate City, into a tourist attraction. Meanwhile, our bodies lay waste at the corners of these streets. Meanwhile, we the street sweepers. Meanwhile, we picking up the trash, and you enjoying your day in D.C. You enjoying your day in D.C. The God of this Bible, just like you oppressors didn't forget about Osama bin Laden 10 years later and went and got him after 9-11, after 
God doesn't forget. God remembers what you did and how you spoiled God's chosen people, man. God remembers. Give me Proverbs 22 and 23. Give me Proverbs 22 and 23, man. You understand? Not only have you waged war on us, you spoiled us, man. You showed your hatred full effect. You showed just how much you really don't love everybody. You lie to black people. You lie to yourselves. Because you know deep in your heart, Mr. Oppressor, that you never love black people. You know that you never love black people. You know that you never show love to a black poor man, or a black Hispanic, or a black Native American Indian. You know that you never show love to us. But yet, you try to act like you are. You try to act like you're pure. You're a liar, man. You understand? Give me what I want. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 23. For the Lord will plead your cause. For the Lord will plead your cause, because that's what you did, America, right? You went over to the Middle East and put one right between Osama bin Laden's eyelids. You put a hole right in his head, in front of his family. You went and pleaded your cause. The Bible says what? For the Lord. For who? For the Lord. For who? For the Lord. Like, man, I know you was never taught in the Christian church that somebody would remember what has happened to you and would plead for your cause. I know you was taught some mythology that God just forgives everybody and don't nobody got to pray for slavery. That's a goddamn lie. I know you was taught that don't nobody got to pay for lynching. That's a goddamn lie. I know that you was taught that nobody got to pay for setting blacks and Hispanics on fire. I know you was taught that. But the Bible says this, read. For the Lord. For the Lord. Who? For the Lord. The God of Israel. For the Lord. Like the God of blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Keep reading. For the Lord will plead their cause. Uh-huh. And spoil. The Lord will plead their cause. Their. T-H-E-I-R. There, that's talking about someone specific. That there is talking about blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. God is going to plead your cause. I know you get the attorney that the judge gives you inside of that court system. You get some low down that don't know how to, that don't know the law. Well, guess what, man? God going to plead your cause. God going to plead the cause of the slaves. God going to plead the cause of the slaves of blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. God's going to plead your cause. Everybody else has somebody to plead their cause, right? A um, uh, uh, black man, what, what, what nation of, uh, uh, fights for you? Huh? What army fights for you? What navy fights for you? What air force fights for you? What marines fight for you? The Bible says this, who? For the Lord. Who? For the Lord. You ain't got to worry about it, man. I know that you ain't got no army of your own. I tell you what, man. You understand, Commander Jenny Hahn in the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, he's raising up an army that you can come stand in today. Right. You understand, he's raising up an army of blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. He's building up a nation while another nation is falling. Right. He's following the Bible. The Bible understands, and it's according to Scripture, that this place is going to fall. And if you can be so arrogant to believe that it's not. You understand, the Egyptians start the same thing, and now they're drowning underwater. Now they stink and underwater. The Egyptians start the same thing. The Greeks start the same thing. The Romans start the same thing. The Babylonians start the same thing. And they all fail. America, you're on your last leg. And that's evidence. This entire world is filled with fire and smoke and evil and disgust and dr riddled with drugs, riddled with violence, riddled with chaos, riddled with confusion. You're on your last leg. Anybody knows that something like that can never function. It can never function. And the final blow is when blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians wake up to this place that is falling. That's the final blow, man. And we got somebody to plead our cause. The God of his word. And how is he pleading our cause? You got hurricanes every day. Tornadoes every day. You got different strands of viruses every day. God is showing you a trailer that he ready to end this place. Hawaii, a place that you was buying a ticket first class. You was buying the ticket, you got to some new swimming trunks. He burnt that place up too. The places that you thought was vacations is turning into ashes right before your eyes. New York City, you couldn't even see through the smoke. And right before your eyes, you seen a trailer coming straight from the hand of God. Straight from the hand of God. The Christian church ain't teaching you this, man, but it's the absolute truth. And black man, Hispanic man, and Native Indian man, you better know that you are, that you have a God that's going to plead your cause, that's going to remember you. Because why? Your oppressor told you to forget about your slavery, forget about your oppression, forget about your bloodshed, and remember their bloodshed. Guess what, man? 
You can forget all day long, but God remembers the bloodshed. God remembers the lives that was taken of blacks and Hispanics. God remembers. Right. And it's not going to go unheard of. And we're going to prove it in the Bible, man. Keep reading. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the souls of those that spoil them. And what is God going to do? Spoil. What is God going to do? Spoil. Now, I thought God was all love. It said the Lord will plead their cause and spoil them. I thought God was all love. I thought Christ was coming back with hugs and kisses. I thought God just loved everybody, Christ loves everybody, and everybody has salvation. But the Bible says this, God is going to plead their cause. Who is they? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. And what is God going to do? Boy, God is going to destroy our oppressors, man. God is going to put our oppressors into chains because you belong in chains. Right. You don't know how to handle yourself. You're a wild beast off the leash. Right. And you have yet to be brought judgment. God is going to bring judgment to this place, man. We got a God that's going to fight for us. While you've convinced us through your Christianity that don't nobody got to pay for 400 years of slavery, this God remembers. And we, you should understand, white man, you remember 10 years later what Osama bin Laden did to you. God remembers everything that you did to the slaves. God remembers everything that you did to these people right here on this side. Right. You thought you was just going to get away from it, go in your grave and sleep all peacefully, and you get to pick the grave site next to your parent, next to your pop-pop, next to your father. You thought it was going to be nice and comfortable down there. God going to burn that thing up too, man. God going to burn that thing up too. All of your national cemeteries, all of them that fought for this place and fought against blacks and Hispanics, man. God got something for you. The Bible said he's going to plead for their cause and spoil them. Keep reading. And spoil the souls of those that spoil them. And spoil the souls of those that spoil them. That's in the Bible. Hold this up. That's in the Bible, man. We're not making this up. You've been teaching something about equality and fairness, but you ain't been fair. You are a nation of people that has not been fair to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. How have you not been fair? How in the hell can I remember 9-11, but not remember the slavery that you put my people in? You're not fair. You're not fair. But God said he's going to spoil the souls of them that spoiled us. You're the souls that spoiled us. You're the cancer that spoiled us. You're the virus that spoiled us. You're the evil man on this earth, the evil nation, the brutal man that destroyed us, that spoiled us. You're the one that did so, man. And God is going to, and God remembers it, man. God remembers it. Give me Psalms 55 and 20. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 20. You understand? You think that we are just going to believe forever your lives. Today is a new day. You oppressors is going to pay for what you did to black people and Hispanics and Native Indians by the hand of God. Right. You're going to pay for it. And it's not going to be filled with hugs and kisses. It's going to be filled with fire. It's going to be filled with hurricanes. You understand? Go ask the Egyptians. The Egyptians had to watch as their world was poisoned to them to find for us. Right. That's going to shock your mind. You see hurricanes hitting your neighborhoods and not black people's, it's going to spoil your mind. You see tornadoes hitting your neighborhoods, earthquakes messing up your schools, earthquakes messing up your lane, viruses messing up you. The Egyptians, their mind was blown. They were trying to figure out how in the hell is the slaves not being affected by what's going on in Egypt. America, your day is coming. America, your day is coming. He's going to spoil the souls of them that spoiled us. America, you spoiled God's chosen people. You ruined God's chosen people. You told us we were trash. You told us that we were nothing. You said that we were no good. You said that we were staying on society. Donald Trump said that Hispanics was bad hombres and take all their jobs. That's what you said about us. Keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. Because God remembers. You understand? And you persons have no sympathy. There's no apology in your bones. You understand? You have not changed and you're no different than your forefathers, man. You're the same slippery bastard as your forefathers. You lie to black people today the same way you did back in the day to us, man. You're a liar. You understand? You try to, you don't never let black people talk about the slavery that's happened to us, but meanwhile, we got to remember your fall. Meanwhile, we got to remember the tragedy that's happened to America. Meanwhile, we got to remember the Twin Towers and the Pentagons. 
What about Black Wall Street? What about Rosewood? Can we remember those? You say no. There's no flags lowered for that. There's no flags lowered for the Hispanics. There's no flags lowered for the, for the, uh, for the black men and Native Indians. No problem, man. God gonna lower that flag permanently. God gonna lower down that American flag permanently. You ain't got to put it down half sad. God gonna put it down all the way. That flag is going to burn when Christ comes back, man. You understand? You got the nerve to tell the slaves that it's in the past. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But every year you celebrate 9-11. Every year you get to remember 9-11. God remembers what happened to us. God remembers what happened to us. And you're not going to get away with it, man. You understand? Yeah, Babylon is falling